So having discussed some basic adjustments to exposure and laser power, let's go over what adjustments can be made within the protocol manager tab to set up uh, any of these uh, various protocols. So we're gonna start with the simplest one, which is a montage without Z planes and without time. So as mentioned before, we need to add channels. One thing I did not mention before is you can change the order of the channels by using these arrows. For example, we could do DAPI first, or do GFP first. Uh, my recommendation is to always go from longer to shorter wavelengths. That minimizes damage. Um, so that's what we need to do with the channels. We can then uh, expand each of these options here uh, to adjust uh, various other things related to the protocol. So this is a protocol without time less, but if we wanted, we could add a time repeat. I'm not gonna do that now. It's a protocol with a montage. If I open this up, the montage you can see is enabled. And within this montage section, you have various options. So first, you can set the width and height of the montage and an overlap if you're in this fields mode, which just takes wherever we are and does this. And you can see that, you know, since this is set to center, it will create a three by three grid with the current position in the center. An alternative is to use this edge mode where we can define positions that are within uh, the, uh, the desired montage, and it generates the smallest rectangle that contains all of them. So the way we would use that would be as follows. We can go to our image um, where we had taken a 10x, uh, a larger area, and we can say, I want to add, I want to actually go here, make sure that's clicked. I want to go to this position, add that current position to the table, then add this position to the table, and that will create a rectangle that goes from here to here, spanning this entire region. And now we're at 20x, so it's going to be way more images. So that's how you set up a montage with this edge mode. Alternatively, as I said before, we can use, just use the field mode. I'm going to skip drift stabilization settings and trigger settings, which apply really to other experimental designs. And I'm just going to go to image processing. And we can decide to turn on the stitching um, so that it is automatically stitched at the end. And it's going to be stitched with the conditions shown here. Of these, really the, the important one is to, if you have a, a situation where there are channels which are very noisy and channels which have a lot of structure and good signal in them, make sure in the channel used for correlation matching, you select user defined so you can tell the software which channel to use for the stitching. So we have the protocol set up now. If we want to run this protocol, uh, which you can see will be a grid size four wide and seven high. We can hit the acquire button and it will go ahead and do everything that's here. So let's see how that goes. It's asking me before it starts what we want to use for stitching. I'm gonna tell it we wanna use this GFP channel. Here it says how long it's run for. Here it says how much time is remaining. This allows us to pause the protocol. This will allow us to stop the protocol. If we do either of those things, we can also elect to discard the data. As it's running, we can actually live look at other fields. Um, and there are different display modes here, among them this one, which shows without stitching how the images are gonna be acquired. The reason this looks weird is because it's doing auto adjustments of the uh, contrast for the display live for each of these. You can see if you look here that it is now stitching it automatically because we told it we wanted it stitched automatically. And finally, it creates a stitched image. You can see here in the manage files that we have the stitched uh, file here. If we look at the folder where that file is, which is going to be in user data, my folder. It's going to be in today's folder. You can see that the file that it's referencing here is this Fusion Stitcher one, because it's the stitched file. But there are also, uh, with uh, a similar name, a set of subfiles. This is if you wanted to look at the raw images 
and re-stitch them yourself, either because the stitching failed or because you just want one of those uh, raw images. So remember, the ones that say Fusion, Fusion Stitcher are the final stitched versions of these files. And if you look closely, you'll see that they go from the, the subfiles go from F00 to F27 because it's a 4 by 7 therefore 28 image tile. So once you have the image here, you can adjust the contrast. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can zoom in by scrolling. You can, if you have the hand selected, can left click to move around. Down here where it says zoom, you can fit to the full field of view or select whichever zoom position you want. You'll notice that as we move the cursor, the positions uh, here change. That tells you where you are in the image. Those positions are the first two numbers down here, the ones in parentheses to the right of those numbers, which appear here, are the pixel intensities for one or the other channel. So if I hover over a green cell, the first number will be higher than if I hover over nothing. And if I hover over something that's labeled in blue, the second number will be high uh, because uh, the pixel intensities for the blue are higher at that position. Having acquired a large tile, we can still use this feature to navigate within that large tile wherever we want. This is not just something that's exclusively used with this three by three. We can use it wherever we want. So for example, if we're interested in what's going on down here, I can click there. And if I go to live, I will be at that position. If I switch to the green, I will see what the green signal looks like at that position. And I can adjust the focus if I want with the piezo here.